Well, thank you so much for letting me speak here. It's uh, quite an honor to be here. I'm very excited and very happy to uh, come here and speak to you. Um, normally, I speak for a full day, and this time I've been asked to speak for only 15 minutes, so it's somewhat of a challenge for me, but I'm trying to limit myself as much as I can, so please bear with me. I'm trying my best here. Thank you. So I have tried to think about the 10 new rules for the film industry in this modern age, and that's sort of the Back, background I'm going to do. So 10 rules, 10 minutes, so to speak, make, maybe 15 minutes. That's what I'm going for. The new world we're living in right now is a world of possibilities, a massive amount of possibilities in terms of reaching our audiences. The old world, I believe, was a very limited world. When I say old world, I mean something that goes way back two, three, four years. It's a whole new world now with Facebook and Twitter and uh, Hulu and iTunes and Netflix and what all the other stations, all the stuff are called out there. There's a lot of possibilities. And one of the, the, one of the objections I get from filmmakers and from companies around the world is it's always, oh, no, this is not for us. Crowdfunding is not for us. Social media is not for us. It's not right for our company. It's not right for our film. It's right for everyone because it's about getting in contact with our audience. It is really, really important to be in contact with our audience. Our audience has moved. The audience is still there. They're just using new platforms where they used to use a lot of DVDs in the past, where they used to watch a lot of pay TV in the past, and where they used to, uh, to, uh, to watch a lot of free TV in the past. That has all shifted. And if people are today are on Facebook and if they're on iPads and they're on PlayStation 3 and they're on Xboxes, we need to be there. So we need to be where they are. We need to look at the possibilities and not the limitations. It's extremely important. The second thing I want to talk about is non-exclusivity. The uh, old world was a world made of exclusive exclusivity, meaning that if you were a filmmaker or a company and you sold a film to a TV station or to a sales agent or to a distributor or to any entity out there, they would own your film for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And during that period, there was nothing you can do. The new world, and that's a good thing, is it's a world of non-exclusivity. The filmmakers, the people who make the film, are the exclusive owners. And it's possible now to make non-exclusive deals with direct rent to theaters, with VOD stations like iTunes, like Amazon, and it's possible to connect a wide range of, of possibilities out there, like Netflix, and like Hulu, and many other out there, where you all do a non-exclusive deal. We keep the exclusive rights, and we simply make non-exclusive deals around the world, and we get the revenue stream into, coming into us every month. It's amazing, and <laughs> it's something everybody should look at. So non-exclusivity is a great new word, as opposed to exclusivity. It's a good world and a good word. The next word I want to talk about is fan dependent because we talked about that we are in the independent film world. I don't know who came up with that word, independent filmmakers. We're not independent at all. We're extremely codependent. We're codependent on funding. We're codependent on, on resources. We're codependent on a few people saying yes or no to a film. Fan dependent means that we're dependent on our fans. We were not, they were not independent at all. We, if mom and dad said no, there was nothing we could do, the film would never get made. Now we're only as strong as our fans. We really need to work with our fans. They're out there and we can reach them. We couldn't reach them five years ago because it was so impossible, they were so far away. But because of social media, we can get close to them. The more fans we have, the stronger we are. The better the bargaining position we are in terms of sales agents, in terms of distributors, in terms of TV stations, and in terms of funding possibilities. And the, the, the further away you are from the fans, the harder it is. And it's always been about the audience. We just forget that when we make films because it takes three to four to five years to finance a film. So f audience is something that comes way down the line. We just think, start thinking about the audience from the beginning and we're only as strong as our fans. It's very important to start considering this. My fourth point is the website 2.0. Mm, what is a website 2.0? Well, What's a website 1.0? Well, a website 1.0 is a simple, not a simple website, but that's what most people have. It's a website where you go in, you find information, you look at it, and you go out again. That's it. A website 2.0 is a shareable website, one you can rely. You can like it on Facebook. You can retweet it. You can share it. There's comments. Everybody can share the website they've found. And it's shocking to see in today's age that many movie studios, some of the bigger ones in America, have a website that's 1.0. Many filmmakers, many film producers don't even have a website. How can you promote your film? The responsibility is no longer with the audience. No, sorry, no longer with the distributors. The responsibility is no longer with the sales agent. The responsibility is with us, the filmmakers. And that's what's challenging for a lot of people. It's scary for a lot of people, but we've got to have to do the work now. We're going to get a better deal, and we're going to become more fan independent, and thereby more independent if we do the works ourselves. And a website 2.0, we've got to have for our film and for our film company. Otherwise, how can we be found in information that lives online? Very important to consider this. The fifth, thing, the fifth thing I want to talk to you about is the new order of making a film. 
the old world, we would fund a film first, then we promote it, and then we distribute it. Today, we promote a film first. We start by promoting a film we haven't made. We need to connect with the fans. We need to find out where the audience is. We need to find out who they are and where they are. If you're making a film about cancer, karate, tango, if you're making a documentary about the environmental crisis, if you're making any film, there's an audience out there who's into what you're into. You need to connect with them. You need to start working with them. This is how we can crowdfund a film, where we can go out and ask our fans to contribute towards a film by either donation or by pre-buying a DVD, a digital download, by the T-shirt, by a poster. All these op opportunities are now available for us. And the great thing about crowdfunding that few people don't really talk about is that if not enough people want to crowdfund your film, then don't make your film. It's very simple. Don't make your film if nobody's interested in it. Instead of spending four or five years of your life trying to make a film nobody cares about. Go out and connect with the audience. And crowdfunding is a great way. And you need to promote the film first, then you fund it, and then you distribute it. It's really important to start thinking about that. The, six, the sixth thing I want to talk about is video, video, and video. By that, I mean that everything online is turning towards video. People don't want to read anymore. If there's a blog or there's a website with video on, the one has video on, people stay, more, stay longer, they watch more, and they find out more. Video is a great way of communicating, and the internet is so fast now with the broadband penetration around the world, we can reach a huge audience through video. This is good news for us in the film industry because we make video. Some would say film, but we certainly make moving images, and that's what people want to watch. And it's important to understand online that when you want to promote a film, you've got to share as much from the film as possible. You're going to give as much as your film away as possible without actually giving the whole film away. People's bullshit meter in 2011 uh, is very high. People are very cynical. People don't trust anything. The old way of thinking about a trailer that's 30 seconds long or a minute long doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't work anymore. The Avatar movie that was released uh, last year or the year before that, I can't even remember, there were so many clips from the film that was released online, you could almost, clip the, you could almost uh, cut the whole film together. It's very important to start sharing. The only way people want to show up to the movies is that they can see as much as possible. They want to be convinced that you have to go see your film. Same thing with the go with Batman. The last Batman film was released. The first 20 minutes of the film was released online and um, in order to encourage people to go see the film. So sitting and hiding with a 30 second trailer and saying, oh, this is all I'm going to show, won't work anymore. Video is the way forward and we need to share as much as possible. Otherwise, nobody's going to care about your film. We live in a world of mass information and mass uh, overflow. And if you can't show what you have, then nobody's going to find you. But there's a lot of possibilities if you do. It's very important to start thinking about that. Point number seven of the 10 new rules is social media and email campaigns. You've got to start incorporating social media right away. If people are on Twitter and people are on Facebook, that's where you're going to go out with your messages. That's going to be your new friends. That's where you're going to fan, find your fans. That's where you're going to find your audience. And that's where you're going to go out and share with the whole world. You've got to start having email campaigns. By I mean that, I mean you've got to have on your website a place where people can sign up for a newsletter, where people can subscribe to the news about the film or about your company. Stay in touch. Over time, you can start building a huge database. Um, if you have 500 fans in your database, 1,000 fans, 10,000 fans, a million fans, it will be a lot different when you go to negotiate with a distributor or a TV station. It will be a lot better if you can ask those fans to pre-buy the poster or buy the poster or the t-shirt or the DVD. The more you have, the stronger you are. And social media and email campaigns is a huge step and very important in that whole process. Step number eight or point number eight, audience databases. You've got to build as big as possible. The social media and the email campaigns will allow us to make an audience database. And that ties back to point number three, the fan dependency. We're only as strong as a fan. We're only as strong as how many fans we have in the audience databases. The American filmmaker Robert Greenwald has, more than, has millions of people in his database. Whenever he wants to make a new film, he simply sends out an email to people and asks them to pre-buy the DVD or buy the poster or contribute to one way or another. He doesn't have to rely on, on commission editors, he doesn't have to rely on sales agents, he doesn't have to rely on TV stations, he does not have to rely on a, any distribution deal. He can do the whole thing himself. He's truly independent, he's truly fan dependent. And because he delivers to his audience and the audience expects a certain kind of films for him, he has an amazing uh, cooperation together with his audience. That's the way forward. Rule number nine, do it with others. We call this, this new decade, this new way of making films, do it yourself, DIY. It's a common used expression, everybody's talking about DIY. I don't believe in DIY. Yeah, I believe that we have a lot of power as filmmakers and producers that we could do a lot for ourselves, that we can go out there and get films. But we've got to do it with others. Just as long, when we look at a credit list for a film, we have people who are editors, we have people who are, who have, you know, done the post-production, we have people who have shot the film, we have done people who have cast, people who have put the clothes on people. There's a lot of different roles on a film set. 
We're just going to add some more and it's going to be about social media and it's going to be about people who can contribute and help get a film out there. Some call it the producer of marketing and distribution, the PMD. I don't care what you call it, but you've got to have somebody on there who's really good and understanding social media. It might be your 14-year-old cousin who understands social media. It might be a 22-year-old student coming out of university, but somebody who understands how things move online. Somebody who's into social media, you've got to approach them, you've got to have them on your film, you've got to help them. They can get a nice title of the film, they might get some percentage of the money coming in, but you've got to rely on them And if you don't want to do this yourself. As a producer or as a filmmaker, you don't do everything yourself either. So you have to go out and have other people help you with your film. Otherwise, you're dead in the water. You've got to have that. And there's plenty of people out there who understand the internet if you don't do it. Lastly, but uh, not least, is are you a filmmaker 1.0 or are you a filmmaker 2.0? Where are you in the whole process and where do you want to come? Most five years ago, we're all, most of us wanted it was a filmmaker 1.0, and that's where the majority of filmmakers are still stuck, unfortunately, because they're stuck in the old ways. I'm not saying the old ways are bad, but as funding is being cut back around the world, as more and more distributors are closing shop, as DVD sales are falling, and as TV, we get fewer and fewer money for TV stations, there's leaving a huge gap in the market. And if we don't upgrade ourselves to a more modern version of today where the audience is, we're not going to survive in the long run. So are you filmmaker 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, or are you all the way at 2.0? There are several filmmakers out there who's 2.0, who's trailblazing and show us the way. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of people who's stuck back in filmmaker 1.0. And it's a question of you. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be connecting with your audience, or you don't want to connect with your audience? So that's my question. That's my presentation. I try to do it in 10 minutes. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> 10 rules, 10 minutes. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye.